Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering a question from the June 2018 LXL Core Mathematics C3 paper. Um, this question is related to P3 differentiation. And um, there's actually a point in part B which I want to make, uh, which refers to a question in an earlier paper, which I've answered, and um, I will explain that and I get to it. So first of all, uh, we want to differentiate this function. Okay, y equals 2x times 3x minus 1 to the power of 5. Now here we have two separate things multiplied by each other. You have 2x and then you have 3x minus 1 to the power of 5. In the second one, you have a function inside a function, in which case we would have to use a chain rule to differentiate this. But as a whole, you have two separate functions multiplied by each other. So we, we have to use what's called the chain rule. Okay. The, sorry, we have to use what's called the product rule uh, in order to differentiate a product of two separate things. When you have a function inside the function, you use the chain rule, which we'll have to do for this. So when you use a product rule, the first part of it you call 2x, or any, any part of it actually, it doesn't matter, whichever one you want. One of them is two, one of them is the one product, so 2x is one of the products, and the other product is 3x minus 1 to the power of 5. So we differentiate the first part which is going to give us 2 we diff with respect to x and the second one with respect to x we're going to use the chain rule here so we first of all take it as the main function okay now the main function is something raised to the power of 5 it's like a polymo polynomial type of function how does that differentiate well you multiply by the power and then you take one from the power and then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function so you end up with 15 times 3x minus 1 to the power of 4. That's what v dash x is equal to. And when you now want to um, find dy dx, what we do is we multiply v by u dash and u by v dash. Okay, so you multiply v by u dash, so you're going to have 2 times 3x minus 1 to the power of 4. 5, oops, what am I doing there? 2 times 3x minus 1 to the power 5, plus, and then you add, sorry, this times this, which is 2x times 15, 3x minus 1 to the power 4. Most people do it the other way around, actually. They do this times this, plus that times that. But I like to use this, this, this order, because with the quotient rule, we have to start in this order and we're subtracting, so it's important, the order in subtraction. So I like to keep it the same order so that I don't get mixed up. All right? So now this gives you 2 times 3x minus 1 to the power of 5 plus 30x times 3x minus 1 to the power of 4. So they want the answer as a single fully factorized expression. Okay, so over here we see we have a common factor um, in the numbers, which is 2, and also we have... 3x minus 1 to, uh, like is a common factor in both of these terms. So the highest common factor is always the one with the lower power. So it's 3x minus 1 to the power of 4. That's the highest common factor of these two terms. And then what am I left with here? Well, I've already got the 2. All I have left is to put 3x minus 1. If I do 3x minus 1, I don't even have to... Let me put it in a bracket for now just to make it clear. Okay, so I'll put this as a square bracket. So 3x minus 1 times 3x minus 1 will give you 3x minus 1 to the power of 5 times 2. So this, when I expand this, when I multiply this term with this term, I get that exactly. And then what do I have to do to get from 2 to 30x? I have to multiply by 15 and x. And 3x minus 1 to the power of 4 is already there. So I don't have to multiply by anything like that. It's just 15x. 2 times 2 times 3x minus 1 to the power 4 times 15x will give us 30x times 3x minus 1 to the power 4. So this is the factorized version of this, except I can simplify what's inside this bracket. So I have 2 times 3x minus 1 to the power 4 times, and this is going to be 3x plus 15x, which is 18x minus 1. So here is our answer, the fully factorized um, expression for dy dx. Okay, then it says, hence find the set of values of x for which dy dx is less than or equal to 0. So now we can say that 2 times 3x minus 1 to the power 4 times 18 minus, 18x minus 1 
is less than or equal to zero. Now, we know for sure that two is positive. This is always positive. But all of this is going to be positive. There's no way this can ever be negative. The lowest, the lowest it can be is zero. Okay, the lowest it can be is zero when x becomes um, one third. When x equals one third, this will be zero. So that's one of the solutions which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Uh, now, if we want this whole thing to be negative or zero, then that will only occur when 18 minus 18x minus 1 is negative or zero. When 18 minus x, 18x minus 1 is less than or equal to zero, then this whole thing will become zero. Okay, that's one of the cases where this whole thing will become, will be negative, sorry. This whole thing will be zero or negative when 18x minus 1 is negative because this part is always positive. So if this is ever, if this is also positive, then this won't be true. The gradient will not be less than zero. Okay, this is the gradient function. We want to know when it's less than or equal to zero. And it's only going to occur when 18x minus 1 is less than or equal to zero because this part is always positive. Why? Because it's raised to a positive power. So whatever value of x you put in here, this thing will always be positive. Okay, the only time when it won't be positive when it's zero, and that's when x equals one third. Now for this to be true, x has to be less than or equal to one over 18. So that's one of the solutions. You also have the case, as I mentioned, when three x minus one equals zero, then x equals one third is also one of the solutions. Okay, so these are the two cases in which this would be less than or equal to zero. If it just said less than zero, then this would be just the answer. Because it says less than or equal to zero, then this has to be included as well. Which brings me to a point um, which is a bit of a doubt for me now for one of the questions I answered recently, but from a very old paper. And I've actually written to the examining board to for them to check their mark scheme because I have a doubt on that. I think that really what we did here will apply to that question as well. Um, let me just show you. Okay, so the question that I'm talking about is the question which we can see over here. This question over here. Because in this question it says find hence find the set of values of x which dy dx is greater than or equal to zero now in this case this is from the june 2017 paper this is from june 2017 c3 in this case here we know that this is always positive okay let me just we know that this is always positive okay and for this to be positive then this must also always be positive must always be greater than or equal to zero. So 22x squared minus 2 must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, in which case um, you have x is, you know, x 11x squared minus 1 must be greater than or equal to zero. In this case, is a quadratic type of inequality. So, uh, you know, for this, this to be true, then we can see that the critical values are minus, minus um, root 11 over 11 and plus root 11 over 11. So when x is less than this and more than that, this thing will be greater than zero. All right, this thing will be greater than zero. So those are two of the values. But there's also this over here, okay, where x squared minus 1 is going to be equal to zero when x equals 1. Okay, now when x equals 1, this becomes zero. And if this becomes zero, then dy dx is equal to zero. Okay, so we can see that there's no restriction for x not being able to be anything. It doesn't say anything about that. So therefore, um, x equals 1 should also be one of the solutions according to my understanding of what we just seen in the last question as well. x equals 1, not 11, not 11, 4. x equals 1 should also be one of our solutions. Okay, because when x equals 1, this becomes 0. Okay, um, x squared minus 1 equals 0. In fact, when x equals plus or minus 1, because you have x squared equals uh, 1, so x equals plus or minus 1. So in fact, it should be x equals plus or minus 1 
that should be one of those should be also two solutions because if you put minus one in here okay then this becomes zero all right so therefore the whole thing becomes zero if you put one in here this becomes zero this bracket becomes zero so therefore the whole thing can become zero as well so that's two places where the gradient will equal zero and x equals one or minus one and also when x is less than this value and more than that value more, less than or equal to that value and more than equal to that value that's when this gradient will be greater than or equal to zero so in fact we should have x equals plus or minus one as another you know pair of kind of uh, in addition to this we can say union with union with um oops x is such that x equals plus or minus one okay so that should also be one of the answers x equals plus or minus one also all right so i i'm pretty sure that that's actually what should be in this answer okay so i'm going to put a little link at the bottom of the video of this particular video which this is answered in to take you back to this section here but i've written actually to the examining board um just yesterday um pointing that out and i will if it is uh, if what i'm saying is correct i will leave this as it is if not then i will remove this okay but there's just a few days to one of the exams i just want to make sure that everyone gets that you know um understood okay the mark scheme doesn't include plus or minus one and it's pretty clear to me plus or minus one should be included because if it said just greater than zero without the equal sign yes then that answer would just be these two but x equals minus one makes this bracket zero makes the whole thing zero so dy dx becomes zero x equals plus one also makes this zero therefore makes the whole thing zero which makes inequality true okay so just a little point there so let's go back to our question our question is this one here so that's the reason why i've included x equals one third in this particular answer because that makes this bracket zero okay and when this bracket becomes zero then this is also true so when x here we want to find the, the range of values of x for which the gradient is less than or equal to zero this is always positive therefore when this is negative or zero then the gradient will be negative or zero in total and also when this x is a value which causes this bracket to become zero then the whole thing becomes zero as well so that's when x equals one third okay so there's the answer to that question i think that's the whole thing yeah, that's question number one answered. So I hope that was clear. I just wanted to clarify a point from one of the other papers, which was, um, you know, I think just the year before. It wasn't two, I said 2007 at the beginning. I meant 2017. Okay, so um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from the topic of differentiation from P3 in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch some videos which will explain to you how to find um, things you need from my channel easily by clicking on the link that comes here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.